Hi everyone, this is your chess puzzler and a very, very warm welcome to the channel. The fifth round part two is about to get started and I'm talking about the major competition of the 2017 FIDE World Cup. From the four games of round five, part one, if you like, every single game has been extremely tough and in fact impossible for any player to find himself to victory with the exception of this player, Levon Aronian, who took full advantage when Ivanchuk made a critical and fatal error in the opening. But whether Ivanchuk played bad or not, Aronian also showed gaps in his play, so it is not over until the fat lady sings. Where is she? Seriously, the game I love to look at is this, the one between Wesley So and Vladimir Fedosev. Wesley White went for e4 and threw e5, knight f3 and knight f6. This was another Petrov. Wesley went for the classical variation, a move characterized by knight takes e5, and now with d6 and knight back to f3, Fedosev took the pawn on e4, and now with d4, d5, bishop d3, and bishop e7, if you're a Petrov player, you would also know this variation. If not, the bishop e7 move brings into play the Petrov classical attack mason variation. But I think for the mason variation to come into effect, both players need to castle. In this game, Wesley did, but Fedosev continued by developing his knight to c6, and now with knight d2, it was up to Fedosev whether to grab the knight or vacate that square. Certainly, what you don't want to do is to push the pawn to f5. This move is playable, but if you like open games, it just may be the right move for you. Fedosev did cover the knight and got his bishop out to f5 and the game continued with rook e1, knight takes, queen recaptures and once the bishops were removed, Fedosev castled. Each player developed their pieces through c3, queen d7, bishop f4, a6, rook e2, rook e8, and now the other rook came to support the rook on e2. Through bishop d8, we saw knight d2, and once the rooks came off, Ferrosiv went for a5. Wesley went for knight b3, but b6 was not difficult to find. With the knight being completely useless on b3, Wesley pulled him back to c1. And now through f6, a4, knight e7, and knight d3, Still, this knight could not do much so far. The only reason for getting the knight to d3 was for Wesley to go for b4, and should there be an exchange, the knight on b4 would be much stronger. The other option is to move the bishop on f4 so that the knight can occupy this square. By the way, if you notice, the pawn on a4 is hanging, so why not go for him? Taking this a pawn will lead to bishop takes c7, and once the bishop recaptures, the queen is free to recapture. And with the queen controlling the center of the board, this is not the position to be under if you wear black. Fedosev didn't even give a chance to Wesley. He went for g5, forcing the bishop all the way to base. Knight g6 led to the covering off the a pawn, and now with the bishop returning to e7, Wesley came up with something very interesting. Do I have any takers here in 2, 1 and pause? h4, giving up a pawn just to open up the position. Having taken the pawn, Wesley continued with knight f4. We saw no exchanges, but instead Fedosev came up with rook to f7. Queen e6 got the queens off. And once the knights came off, this was going to be some tough endgame. 
Fedosiev returned his bishop to d8 again, and with b4, Fedosiev was beginning to get his king ready for action. King g7 led to the elimination of two pawns, and with the rook being launched to a6, something was hanging. Fedosiev decided to save his a pawn, but he had to give up his c pawn. A wise choice because if the a pawn falls, there was nothing stopping this pawn on a4 from creeping up slowly, slowly up the board. c6 it was, and Wesley grabbed him right away. King g6 got the rook to c5, and now this rook moved to d7 was a bit forced to save the d-pawn. Wesley went for f3, and now with the king getting active, Wesley dropped this bishop back to a safe square. King e6 secured the safety of the d-pawn and this meant the rook can go places. Wesley here came up with a check, but what if Ferrosiv sticks in his rook to block? If the two pieces come off, who's better? I think white because of his pawn formation, but it's going to be a very difficult ending with the same colored bishops on the board. Ferrosiv did not go for the rook move here and decided it was best to get his king out of the check. With the bishop finding e1, Wesley was after this age pawn, Fedosiev had very little choice and had to move his king again to protect the pawn and now with the rook returning to c5, Wesley had nearly every single avenue under control, leaving black with very few choices. Fedosiev went for f5 and now with the king getting into h2, we saw king h5, bishop f2, rook d6, bishop e3, and here Fedosiev decided to attack the rook, like you do. Rook b5 led to the bishop returning to, you guessed it, d8. And now it was Wesley's turn to go after the rook, sending the rook a square up the rank. And you can see how Wesley takes full control of the board. Sticking in his bishop on e5 blocks the axis of the rook to c7, so that c3 pawn can never be threatened. After all, if ever the rook is able to get on c7, the rook can always get back to b3 to protect him. But why should he? Once the rook leaves the d-file, the d-pawn is going to drop and the bishop on d8 is also in danger. King g5 got the rook to c5 and here with a very few moves remaining, Ferrosiv pushes his pawn down the board. Once Wesley got his own rook to c6, the king came into f5, but Wesley was just waiting as he did in the last five to six moves. He returned the rook to a6, but one thing for sure, this was some end game. Wesley seems to be far better, but there is no way he can make any further progress. Every single piece by Fedosiev is covered, so how on earth is Wesley going to come up with the winning moves? King g5 led to king h3, and Fedosiev was in no rush to do anything. He returned the king to f5, and in turn Wesley returned his rook to c6. Fedosiev would be one happy man if he comes out of this one, even with a draw. And what did he do? King g5, of course. Once the king left the f5 square, Wesley's rook rushed to e6, and just see how resourceful Fedosiv is. He blocks the rook's path to the e-file by getting his bishop in on e7. Rook c6 led to a repetition of moves, and here Wesley decided to go for something else. He got the bishop in on d6, and yes, you guessed it, Fedosiv returned his own king to f5. If you think Wesley had no problem, this is his time right now, and this is Fedosiv's time, and this might just cause panic. Since there was no way out, Wesley got his king back to h2, definitely looking to get him active by bringing him to the other side of the board. Rook g7 got the bishop back to e5, and only when Fedosiv returned his rook to d7, Wesley took the decision to get rid of the rooks in the hope he would win the game. He went for rook d6, and with the rooks coming off, we saw king g5, king g1, king f5, king f2, king g5, 
king f1, king f5, bishop a3, king e6, king e2, king f5, bishop c1, and king back to g5. And you can see even the very best chess players are struggling with these endgame positions. After king f1, Ferrosi went for bishop c7, and now with bishop d2, bishop d8, bishop e1, and king back to f5, Wesley went for king e2, king e6, king d3, king d7, and now we see a real break, c4. Once the king got into c6, it looks we were back to square one. Bishop c3 led to bishop b6, bishop b2, bishop d8, bishop c1, bishop c7, bishop d2, h5, bishop c3, bishop b6, bishop b2, bishop c7, bishop a3, bishop d8, and now bishop to f8. With the bishop coming in on g5, Wesley came up with bishop g7, and the white stands much better, Wesley had to find a way through. Fedosiev came up with king d6, and Wesley only needed a check on e5, something he eventually found. Once the king got to c6, just keep your eyes open to see how this is being played out. King c3 led to bishop h6, and once the bishop uncovered the file, Wesley occupied the f6 square, and the end now was not too far. Bishop f8 was pretty much the end. The bishop on f6 can always eliminate the pawn on h4, but Wesley was in no rush to take him. He first got the king out of any potential checks, but here Ferrosiv went for h3, forcing Wesley to take. Whatever Ferrosiv goes for, he's just always too short. He came up with bishop to d6, and now with Wesley slotting his bishop in on e5, this was it, and Ferrosiv resigned. So what happens after bishop e5? If you take and recapture, king c5 will bring about this lovely move, and now once the pawn on d5 is taken, when the king recaptures, white can push ahead the pawn to e6. Once the pawn is taken, white only needs to occupy the square on e4, and from here on, it's just a matter of principle to finish this one off. And this is the reason why Ferrosiv resigned. This has been a super endgame battle between Wesley and Ferrosiv, with Wesley managing in the end to send Ferrosiv home. So what do we have now? With Ivanchuk putting up a tremendous fight against Aronian, he held to a draw, but this means Aronian is through and Ivanchuk goes home. On board three, Ding eliminated Rapport from the race, but there is still one game with unfinished business. Bashila Graf and Svitler are still on equal footing, and all eyes will be turned here tomorrow. Just to summarise, we have Aronian, Ding and Wesley so going through, and by tomorrow we will know whether it will be Vashila Graf or Svetler. In the meantime, many thanks for taking part, and many, many, many thanks for watching. This was your chess puzzler.